Hey everyone, Rabbit Hedgehog here, and we want to thank our sponsors before the start of this video. Shout out to Law Tigers out there riding with us right now, but standing with us in the event of an accident. Need custom racing leathers or gear for the everyday ride? AGV Sport USA is here for that and based out of Argyle, Texas and serving riders nationwide. Also, we want to thank Doug Crawford, an independent Amsoil dealer, for providing us with the fluids that keep our machines running well on into the future. Visit the description below for web links and contact details to get in touch with them today. What's up everybody, Rabbit Hedgehog here and this is my ride in review of the Indian Super Chief that is below me here. This is out of Indian of Oklahoma City. It's actually out of their demo tour that is going on today. They actually have switched that uh, method and we actually get to ride around on our own. So no catch or lead riders or anything like that. Just a standard riding affair today, which is kind of nice. And uh, we're going to take a look at this nice motorcycle, give it a ride, and let you know what we think about it. One thing is for sure, this one does have a little bit of the taller riser on it than what generally comes on this. I do believe it is the 10-inch riser, so it's a little bit different. So it does have kind of a different feel to it. I'm more of a flat bar kind of person. I don't like them being this high because you do sit very low in this motorcycle. And uh, so your elbows do have a little bit of a rise. Not much for me. I am six foot tall, 32 inch inseam. So it's almost straight out for me, but it feels, it still feels a little weird. I'm used to having my arms at a more downward angle and not an upward angle like we have on this motorcycle today. Of course, we have our sport fairing or a little bikini fairing up in the front. We do have the cool four inch Indian ride command which you can change by hitting the little paddles behind over here on the left side. You can, of course, see like your ride time, your distance, elevation, current odometer. I mean, this thing is full of information. Of course, you have a Navi screen on here as well, which is super nice to have. And it was the first one to kind of put that together when the chief line come together on a smaller motorcycle never saw really anything like that out of anybody else which that is pretty nifty to have navigation right in front of you it is a touch screen wish traffic would get up to a little bit more speed today but you know life is life there is the speedometer with the tachometer setting with a gear counter on it I have to say, the mirrors and everything are nicely placed. I could see everything beautifully behind me. Go ahead and turn that cruise control on here real quick. Very standard Indian affair on the right side. Cruise control, press in, left to set, right to adjust speed up. Of course, you have your engine cutoff switch, your on-off switch, or power on the motorcycle right there since it is keyless. So you don't have a button here, it's on the handlebar now. You do have that additional paddle in the back for controlling the screen if you need to. You also have that paddle on the back for the left side. Of course, you have your horn and your brights, your turn signals. You do have a way to connect your um, you know, media players and all that stuff into the ride command. And this controls, it's very similar to how the uh, FTR works. You can, of course, skip your tracks, volume and all that fun stuff and of course you got your menu screen as well and it changes out also your dials that's the nicest one i see so far i really like that one fuel gauge odometer kind of it looks it all looks almost analog and i am more at home with that but it is cool to have the option to switch it up to so many different kinds it is just a neat little thing and of course if you're in navigation you can control your navigation with that particular paddle and uh all sorts of all sorts of gadgetry that we have on motorcycles today that a lot of people would not have believed seeing this like 20 years ago now i mean it's just amazing what we can do nowadays with all the you know the the competition and everything that is happening with everybody so it is it is nifty to to get all these neat features and stuff like that as we as we continue so it is a beautiful time to be a motorcyclist all right so right now we do have south winds so i can't tell you how much this fairing 
is doing in keeping the wind off of me. I will say this, uh, being that you're so low in the back, there's definitely a complete like Arizona. I can feel the wind right here. You can see where my hand pulled back there for a second. So that's where the wind is hitting right dead in the middle of my visor here. But it doesn't bother me. I'm not getting buffeted by any means. Of course, I have an AGV style helmet on and uh, that that they generally are pretty aerodynamic. So that does take a lot of that buffet out. So if you have, you know, your half helmets or some of the things a lot of the cruiser riders wear, you're probably going to definitely feel some wind and some buffeting on you as you're riding this motorcycle uh, through through the wind and everything. But right now, it is a very pleasant and planted ride. Everything is very, very compact on this motorcycle. Like I said, I'm a little bit taller, so my knees are coming up above the tank due to the mid mount. So you can see that they come, my legs come straight down. Me having these giant feet too, I have to kick them out quite a ways to avoid accidentally hitting brake pedal or, or shifter or anything like that. There is the cleaner right there, but in reality, that cleaner's not even bothering me whatsoever. My leg is kicked out enough from it that I'm not rubbing up against it a la Harley Davidson in their uh, snorkel style breather that's usually on the other side here. I usually end up hitting that and it's never that comfortable to ride with that. So my knees are very much well planted into the tank, just a little bit above and uh, sitting nice and comfortable. Like I said, you're very far down in this thing. It really does feel like you are sitting inside the motorcycle versus being on top of it. So it, it very much will gives you that, that American stance of a handlebar riser, mid mount, a little bit more aggressive than usual style like power cruiser stance and um, you know it, it's a comfortable place to be it's just that you're so low and I mean you could tell this motorcycle has some sportiness to it I mean it is called the chief sport we have inverted uh, forks on this bad boy we have piggyback shocks in the rear we have really nice suspension I might add, because Broke Oklahoma Roads, you guys hear my voice all the time, you know, and it's awful to be sometimes in Oklahoma on a, on a motorcycle unless you've got something that's got really good suspension. And that's why I have chosen the motorcycles I've got now because they're all ADV or FTR or something that has long travel suspension. And that way it's just nice and comfortable. I mean, my foot hit the ground so fast right there, it took me off guard because I'm so used to being up in the air a little bit more. Woo, yeah! I mean, 116 to Thunderstroke. I just went over that huge bump and it didn't throw me off or anything. But that, that huge 116, just way enough power for this bad boy. Very, very spot on. Fourth gear right now, 45 miles an hour, a little over 2,000 RPMs. It is simply not working <laughs> it doesn't have to work it's it's just like i am all power and i am all knowing and i will do what i want you can get another screen here where you can have like your fuel economy your fuel life or not life but gauge and everything so this is kind of outside temperature battery range currently in the tank we're in sport mode right now of course you can flip it up there's the bike you can change your modes pair your phone get to the map do the gauges all that right there through that and I'm gonna stay in sport mode because I like sport mode so I can't help myself Ooh, engine braking is fantabulistic on this thing steps down real nicely brakes Brimbo you know Brimbo grabbers what well, you're never gonna go wrong with Brimbo grabbers Oh man, they grab good. So much power, so much stopping power too. This thing is a whole lot of engine and not a lot of metal around it. This is this is power cruising once again. Oh yeah, that's that's just that's the stuff right there. <laughs> Instantaneous torque. It's almost like riding an electric motorcycle just because there's so much engine in there. And it just rides really, really well. And this is not exactly the best of road, that's for sure. And I'm kind of intentionally hitting these bumps to test the suspension out. And I mean, it is doing very, very well. 
hardly anything is transferring into my skull or chattering my voice or anything. It's just working rather well. Ooh, I need to get up there because this thing wants to get up to speed without any hesitation whatsoever. Yeah, like I said, I, I'm not 100% sure this is the stock one. I think there's a slightly smaller riser on the, on the stock, and this one's the tall. And I would prefer it being just a little bit lower, not, not because it's going to make me numb or anything. It's just because I'm more, I like being down on the bar. I like having a little bit more control. You know, it's, that's why I ride the FTR. That's why I ride the V85 I've got is because it's more of a standard style motorcycle and you can get get some very good turning out of those and, and very good leverage and you just feel like you're more in control than when you're sitting down on the motorcycle but this this guy once you get used to it you can feel how well this chassis is handling everything and how well sprung it is there is no play in the handlebar whatsoever there are many times when people put risers on these things or taller bars or stuff that the bushings and everything, there's something in there and you get that wobble. And that comes from even some of the factory ones or some of the, the dealer ones straight out because the, the bushing types they use and stuff. And you get just like a flex in the bar with this kind of riser. And that's why I've never been a, another, another reason why I'm not a fan of them. But this one does not flex like that at all. It's very solid and very well planted. You know, and it, one of those things of over time, will it change? We never know. I know a lot of Harley Davidsons with their uh, stock bushings and everything like that, those would tend to fail. And of course, you'd get that handlebar walking back and forth on you. And uh, that was never fun to borrow somebody's motorcycle or be riding one when that handlebar was moving about on you like that. Man, these are fantastic brakes very good feel i mean they are spot on they are where they need to be i can hit that back brake i mean this thing is coming to a halt i got it to tap into the abs there for a second grab up both of them oh man that, that haul your face into your helmet kind of stopping power and that is fantastic most cruisers are so lazy when it comes to the the braking packages and this one is definitely spot on where it needs to be. Transmission, all six gears, click in beautifully, click out beautifully. Downshift is crisp, lovely. Oh, that's a neat little graphic, the little way the turn signal pops in there. I think I've said that before on the original Chief, but it's just cool to see it again. Oh yeah, <laughs> back up to the interstate speed. We're going straight into the wind this time. Go ahead and get this back down there a little bit. <laughs> That's some good times right there. Not really being bothered at all by the semis coming by or anything. Like I said, we are going straight into the wind, so we'll get some turbulence coming off. Don't feel anything buffeting me around or pushing me around. The Chief definitely has its stance on the road as a heavy cruiser, and uh, it does not move for anything. Very well planted in the grooves, very well planted with high-speed trucks going by and the wind pushing. There is nothing to worry about with this bad boy here. It just continues to ride the way it needs to ride, and it is a fine rider. I'm doing my best not to touch down, y'all. I, I have a problem with taking motorcycles out and scraping pegs and doing horrible things when they're not mine, and I've made a vow to stop doing that, and uh, so far I haven't done it yet, but I can tell you it comes close. I'm using my foot, like I said, it's so far out, I was actually touching my foot down, and uh, that, that definitely tells me I was close to touching it down. It didn't take too much lean angle to do it either, and that's, that's the disadvantage to having a motorcycle like this. But the thing is, is if you're using it for what it's designed for, cruising, cruiser, just a nice Saturday, Sunday ride and just going down the straightaways, 
down the boulevards and just soaking up miles. This is a very comfortable place to be. Will it do some will it do some work in the canyons? Absolutely it will do some work in the canyons. It won't be as quick or as nimble as you know your your sports hypes or your standards or anything like that. But like I said, if I'm in a mid-mount, this is my same complaint with the uh, street bob. I would prefer the handlebar to be down in a more controllable position, in more of that standard position. And that way I feel like I'm a little bit more in control to the motorcycle than just sitting in it, basically. Man, this thing just easily, I mean, there, this, this thing is not labored at all. It could care less how much power and how much weight it has on it. I weigh 209 pounds and uh, the suspension is just absolutely fabulous. The wind protection is actually rather good. Like I said, I'm, I'm shocked. Despite the wind coming straight into my visor, I'm just shocked at how well it keeps everything off of you and kind of keeps a nice cushiony dead zone on you. Uh, you could ride this thing for hours and it won't beat you up. I can already tell that. I've been on plenty of motorcycles, let's say an Indian Scout or a Harley Sportster or a, any of the Dyna series. You could already feel fatigue in some cases from being bashed around and buffeted and all that. And this one does not have any of that whatsoever in it. It really is comfortable and it is designed to be sporting when you want to play a little bit, but just to cruise in a very power cruiser stance and manner. And it's so well planted. It's a nice, easy rider. And a lot of people can appreciate this. This is the whole thing that I'll have to say is that they listen. I know that this looks squarely at the Lowrider S and it beats it. I mean, it's, it's so much more refined. It is, it is just a better looking motorcycle. It is a better feeling motorcycle. It punches well above its weight. Well, I guess it would be, it's punching at its weight because this thing is a heavy, heavy thing, but it just, it just does so well. And it, it's, it's a welcoming place. I feel very, very welcome on this motorcycle and it's a very good rider. And I could see this uh, being somebody's best friend for a long time to come if they were to choose it. Definitely a highway style motorcycle. Right now our temperature is in the 70s or so and uh, 73 I believe it was. And right now there's no heat coming off of it that's bothering me whatsoever. This motorcycle has been ridden all day at 74 degrees it looks like. Um, but this, this motorcycle has been ridden all day long. So that engine is plenty hot and uh, it does not translate to the rider whatsoever, which is a fantastic thing. Like I said, I'm trying not to drag it because I know I can and I know I will if I'm stupid. It's not my motorcycle. <laughs> oh, the way it just pulls out of those turns and just flies. Woo! Man, when I go back to cruiser life, because I've done that a few times, I keep going to cruisers and I, not, I realize that I'm too hooligan for that. At the, even at my age of 37, I still play too much. I, I found myself a cruiser that, that definitely uh, fits the bill. This is a nice, nice rider. I, I don't expect anything less from Indian at all. The only thing is, and, and I will say this, I'm a little disappointed because I know that COVID has made everything harder for, for research and development and other things to, to come through. And they're doing a lot of parts bin style uh, fixes and things like that. Because you know, the front fork is inverted, but that's probably borrowed from other components that they're already using in their racing programs and the FTR and other things. And then, of course, the fairings and stuff like that. You can borrow that from other motorcycles. Of course, the chief frame is a newer frame, but it's also kind of spread through different lines and stuff. And I really want to see some truly new motorcycles from the ground up, like an updated Scout or something like that. I want to see some, some 
pretty cool motorcycles to come out to keep that that energy alive of course the nightsters out it's new it's it's coming there's all these other motorcycles but i know indian right now they are at the top of the american game and i'm not paid to say that i'm not paid by indian i'm not paid by any dealership i'm not a spokesperson or anything like that just a madman with an opinion i'm used to seeing the inverted forks having you know dials and and adjustments and stuff these are unadjustable like i said it's got the piggybacks in the rear for preload and they do very well very very well done very well done i just i want handlebar down a little bit more if i'm going to have these mid controls instead of that right i guess i just it's just the way i said i would rather be in more of that sport tucked position or standard tucked position than in a laid back barca lounger position so would i recommend a, a sport chief absolutely there's going to be a lot of dyna guys out there that will find this to be the true replacement for the harley davidson lowrider s if not a better replacement for the harley davidson lowrider s it's got the exposed shocks it's got the inverted forks it's got the power it's a it's just a muscle bike and it is unapologetic it is beautiful it is very well put together and uh, this all the technology that you can think of is on here it will definitely make you a happy person to ride so at any rate keep that shiny side up folks and we'll catch you on the next ride